I'm Jason and in this two-part tutorial I'm going to show you how to make your very own multi-room Wi-Fi music streaming system. Now you don't need to be a computer programmer or an IT expert I promise. By following this simple tutorial you'll be able to amaze your family and friends. Look at this like a recipe. In this video we're going to gather the ingredients and in part two we're going to get cooking. The whole idea of this is to create a way that we can stream our music to different rooms in the house. Take the picture of this house as an example. Let's say that I'll be spending a few hours in the kitchen, so I want to listen to my favourite playlist I have constructed or even my Spotify account there. And then maybe I'll move into the living room and wish to carry on listening to the music. In fact, I could listen to the music I wish to listen to when I want to listen to it and be able to have total control from my very own smartphone or tablet. Now of course you can already buy systems like this that are ready made for you to simply plug in around your house. Take the Sonos home Wi-Fi streaming system for example. A superb system, well made with great quality sound that would set you back at around £900. Now if you're happy to part with this amount of cash then that's great, but if you can't stretch your budget to this amount there's no reason you can't do it yourself for around a hundred pounds. Yes, you heard that right, one hundred pounds. So let's take a look at our shopping list. The first thing we're going to need is our base of operations or our streaming server. We can achieve this by a Raspberry Pi. If you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi, Basically, it's a small credit star sized mini computer that was designed for children to start learning computer programming. Make sure you use the B model of the Raspberry Pi. So this will set you back around 25 to 28 pounds on Amazon or eBay, so shop around. You'll also need an SD card to store your music streaming server software on. It can be as small as one gig in size, although I would recommend 2 gig or above. A power supply for your Raspberry Pi, although I've used one of my spare Nokia phone chargers. As long as it has a mini USB power connector, as most modern Android or Windows devices have, that will be fine. The next thing is a network cable. You may have a spare one of these already that came with your router, or you could just pick one up in the pound shop. The other thing we're going to need is a Creative Sound Blaster wireless transmitter, and that's the L8 model. This will be the device that transmits the music around the receiver ports in your house. I managed to pick one of these up from Amazon for £40, but you may find it beneficial to buy this along with the receivers as a pack. You'll see what I mean when you search the web for them. This device plugs straight into a spare USB port on the Raspberry Pi. And lastly, the receivers themselves. You'll need one per room in the house that you wish to stream music to. Now I picked up three of these for £5 each on eBay. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the type of speakers that we're going to be using around the house. You may find that you already have an assortment of speakers to use. So anything like a personal stereo, iPod dock or other types of dock, basically anything that has a phono socket or a jack plug socket can be used. Okay, the last thing to look at is the software that we're going to need to download, and this is all free by the way. The software that we're going to be using to place on our SD card, which will be plugged into our Raspberry Pi, is called Pi Music Box, which can be found at the following website. Don't worry if you don't take down all these websites now, you can see them in the description under the video at the end. We're also going to need a program called Win32 Disk Imager which we'll use to transfer the Pi Music Box software to our SD card. And this is optional, but I like to format my SD card before I start, and I tend to use a program called SD Formatter. But as I said, this is optional, and you can just simply use your Windows computer to format your SD card before you start if you wish. So, download this software to your Windows computer, and that's the first part of this tutorial. In part two, we'll install, configure, and connect. Thanks for watching.